entire service, Claire requested that uh, Bill say a, a few words. And so he's going to share a little bit, uh, then we'll go into our, our service. Yeah. Go on. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you all for coming on this balmy day. <laughs> Leo and Clara. Leo and Clara. Leo and Clara. I can't say one without the other. Even though like uh, Clara, even though Leo has been gone all these years, it's hard to say one without the other. Leo and Clara go together like salt and pepper like the earth and the moon, like Lucy and Desi, Desi, if you remember them. Gail and Gary, you will have to forgive me for my biased account I'm about to give through the lens of my eyes. Gail, Gary, and I have had a unique experience. We've had three sets of parents of sorts. First, we had our, nat our natural parents, which we loved dearly. Unfortunately, our natural parents divorced when I was six, and a few years later, my father married a wonderful woman named Dorothy, who everyone called Dot. My father died when I was 19, and we lost contact with Dot over the years. Much later in life, my mother, in her 70s, married Lyman Schroeder, a wonderful man right here in Midland. He was a World War II Army man who landed on the beaches of Omaha, fought through World War II, and knocked down the back gates of the Dachau concentration camp. Me being a military man, <coughs> Lyman was a hero of mine. So we had our other parents, our stepmother and stepfather, Dot and Lyman. By the way, Leo also landed on Omaha Beach and fought through World War, II, World War II as a tanker and was also a big hero of mine. Okay, now to Leo and Clara. Right from the beginning, they became our second parents as I have referred to them on hundreds of occasions. And when I say right from the beginning, I mean right from the beginning. Now, according to Clara, she was changing my diaper, and being a novice in changing boy diapers, she wasn't aware of the proper process of changing a boy's diaper. <laughs> and you guessed it. Well, I'll leave it to your imagination what happened. She told me the story. And of course, I don't remember. <clears throat> there were times when we were small kids and we were at our grandparents who lived in the Midland area. And Leo and Clara were to come by and pick us up in a few minutes. Well, you know how long a few minutes are to a uh, small kids. I remember bouncing from chair to couch, back to chair, and, kid, and asking my grandmother, is it time yet? Is it time yet? We were so excited we were going to spend some time with Leo and Clara. Time marches on, and there were so many events like this. We lived in Tennessee, and Leo and Clara lived in Michigan, and they would come to Tennessee to attend graduations or to pick us up and go to Florida and spend a vacation at a hotel and visit David Spanigle's family and swim in the pool. Then I graduated from high school in 1965, and somehow Leo and Claire agreed for me to spend the summer at their house in Freeland. They realized what they agreed to? A 19-year-old teenager invading the quiet sanctity of a house in Freeland, Michigan? Holy mackerel. Either way, I had a thousand cousins that lived in Midland, and I wanted to spend time and have fun with all of them. What do teenagers do? We stay out late. Yikes, I would come in late. I look back and just shake my head. One day during the day, I was walking through the house and Leo was changing out the light switches. Why was he doing that? 
Oh, the switch has made a noise when switched on and woke them up when I came home at midnight. <laughs> he was changing, noisy, changing the noisy switches out to non-noisy switches. But he didn't say a thing. He just made the change. David, Leo never got angry. He never raised his voice. I learned one thing, though. If you walk down the middle of the hallway next to their bedroom, on the way to my bedroom, the floor creaked. I quickly learned that if I placed my feet right up next to the baseboards and shuffled down the hallway, the floor didn't creak. I didn't want to wake them up or have Leo change out the floor. That would be expensive. There was one day Clara chased me out of the house with a broom. You know she was funky. After all these years, I couldn't remember why. So a couple of months ago, I texted Clara and asked her if she remembered the incident and why she took the broom to me. Her reply was as follows. Now these were her words. Because we were ready to put dinner or supper on the table, and you said, I'm just going to go talk to Bob next door. And I said, you can do that after we eat. And you went anyway. And when you came back, I got after you with the broom. Now, do you remember that? That was funny. God, we had such good times. Thank you, Jesus. Clara worked at the phone company and did it for 40 years. And apparently one of her jobs was to open new accounts. One day, a rep from Harrison Pipe and Supply Company came in and they were <coughs> opening a new office in Midland and supply piping material to that chemical. Claire asked the rep if they needed workers. The guy said yes. And Claire got me a job with Harrison for the remainder of that summer. And I stayed with Leo and Claire for the following two summers working at Harrison's. I also came up during Christmas holidays and worked at, and worked at Harrison. It was through this job opportunity that Claire provided me that I paid for my college education. I came up two more summers to find jobs at Dow and General Motors that also helped pay for my education. I had told Claire multiple times that I owe her so much for getting me that first job because it was the start of earning my college education. I finished my college education owing nothing. I had nothing in the bank. When I finished college, I owed nothing. And I attribute much of that to Clara. By the way, Gary followed me to Midland when he graduated from high school two years after I did and has been here ever since. Clara is something else. She was also responsible for connecting me with my first love. Clara's incredible. She knew everyone in Midland. But sometimes first loves don't work out. Over the years, Gail, Gary, my mother, Leo and Clara, and I would meet in places like Pigeon Forge or Tawas. What great times. We did this several times until Leo was no longer able to travel. After Leo passed, Clara did meet a new friend, Ron. Thanks to Ron and his family, Ron provide a great companionship to Clara. Over the last few years, Clara did get to visit David and Barbara Spaniel in the Atlanta area, and Angela and me in Huntsville. Even though she was legally blind, she would fly to visit David, and for a while, uh, for a while, and then David would bring Clara to our house in Huntsville, Alabama, to visit for a few days. She was a brave one. One interesting fact about Clara, she was known as the Cadillac Lady. It even made the paper about how many Cadillacs she had purchased. I was wondering if the Cadillac dealership was still in business, now that Clara is a fine of Cadillacs anymore. <laughs> Gary assured me that they are still in business, but McCardles, the owner Clara always bought from, had sold out. What does that tell you? What kind of woman was Clara? The best thing I can say is that she was a Christian. I could stop there, but I have a few more things to add. She was Miss Attitude. She was always positive. If 
If you wanted something done, give it to Clara. She wasn't at Scarlet O'Hara. She didn't put off till tomorrow what could be done today. Don't give Clara a task that you didn't want done. She was misorganization. She was a loving person. She even wrote her own autobiography. She was woman of the year in every organization she joined. She was a go-getter. She was happy and proud to call Philip, Gail, and Gary her kids, which she often did. Before I go any further, I want to thank my brother, Gary. Since Leo's passing, Gary has been there for Clara. If Clara needed help, she called Gary. He's been Clara's right-hand man. Thank you, Gary. There have been more, uh, many more to thank during these closing days of Clara's life. I would name names, but fear of leaving someone out, I won't. But you know who you are. Thank you. Now, having said that, I do want to single out three individuals. Rebecca Spanagle, Melissa Bagley, and my sister Gail. Thank you. We've held five events in this church that Gail, Gary, and I have been involved in. The first event, Gary and I uh, sponsored Leo and Claire's 25th wedding anniversary. The second event, Gail, Gary, and I sponsored Leo and Claire's surprise wedding anniversary. And I want to expound a little bit on the word surprise. I wanted to to be a complete surprise for both Leo and Clara. But after some time into the planning process, Gary realized that was going to be too difficult. I was doing the planning in Alabama, and Gary was doing all the execution in Michigan. Gary said he had to let Leo in on the surprise, so that's what we did. Me being the military planner, tried to think of everything, and I thought I had, except for one thing. I hadn't thought of this. We surprised Clara all right to the point that she almost passed out when she walked in. Her knees buckled and Leo had to catch her. Catastrophe alert. The third event, Leo's funeral. The fourth event, Clara's 90th birthday. I hope many of you were here. A great time was had by all. Miss Universe got the recognition she deserved. Gail did a great job with all the decoration. And finally, the fifth event, Clara's funeral. This is it. There will be no more events at this church. That will include Clara and God. Goodbye, our second mother. Love, Philip, Gail, and Gary. I invite you to open your hymnal to hymn number 744, Amazing Grace. 744, Amazing Grace. And I would ask you to please stand and face the cross as we proceed into the church. <laughs>
not know that all of us have been baptized in Christ, were baptized into death? We were very born for By baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We pray. O God of grace and mercy, we give thanks for your loving kindness shown to Clara and to all your servants who, having finished their course in faith, now rest from their labors. Grant that we may also be fruitful unto death and receive the promise of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is Psalm 37, 5, which is Clara's confirmation verse. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in him, and he will act. Our second reading is Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord, O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleas for mercy. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquity, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, that you may be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than watchman for the morning, more than watchman for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is plentiful redemption. And he will redeem Israel from all their iniquities. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the loving coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with the cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus Christ is the firstborn of the dead. To him be glory and power forever. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. God has made us as people through our baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope we confess our faith. I believe, I believe in God, 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 Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We will continue with our next hymn, 770. What a friend we have in Jesus.
grace to you and peace from God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. It's not easy to say goodbye. Death is not what God intended when he created Adam and Eve. Yet because sin entered the world, death is a reality. It's a part of life, if you will. So we gather here and remember Clara and a life well lived. And as we heard before, what a life she did live. Now, if I asked you for a word to describe Clara, I don't think it would be difficult for one to pop into your head. In fact, probably right now everyone has a word going through their mind that would describe Clara. Now, most of you have known her much longer than I have, but over the last few years, I've got to know her. And I have some words that I think would fit her appropriately. Words like active, energetic, positive, but how about fun-loving? Each of you right now, think of something that Clara did or said that brought a smile to your face. Okay, I can see the smile right now, because you're thinking about an event. You know, um, Clara usually had a smile on her face, too. Now, I would call it, describe it maybe as mischievous. Now, I never really saw her do anything that would fit that word, mischievous. But I can't help but wonder if maybe her smile was an insight to her youth. How about the word author? Yeah, she wrote a book about her family and her life called My Memories. Uh, it was published in 2019, and she even had a book signing at her local library in Hemlock, where she grew up. That was a wonderful evening. How about Miss Universe? That one probably surprised a few of you, but apparently she was crowned Miss Universe by her families and friends at her 90th birthday party. And I'm sure in her shy and modest way that only Claire could say, someone needs to be Miss Universe, it might as well be me. <laughs> family was important to her, so family comes to mind. She spent 61 years with the love of her life, Leo. And Claire and Leo had no children of their own, but their lives were blessed by you who were so close to them, they were considered their, they were considered their own children. And how about friends? Claire had many friends. Some of them are lifelong. In fact, up until at least the last couple of years, she would go to her class reunion at Hemlock High School every year and catch up with the, the people that were uh, still in Hemlock and visit, catch up on things. How about her friends at Michigan Bell that remained so close, known as the Telephone Girls? They met weekly to play cards. In fact, it was just a week or so before Clara passed, I was gonna visit her on Sunday afternoon, and she said, well, Sunday's not good because the telephone girls were coming to play cards. And of course, she enjoyed the company of her dear friends here at our Savior Church. And the number of people here today is testimony to the number of people that call her friend. Two more words come to mind when I describe Clara, and those words are loving and blessing. As Clara's body began to weaken from her condition, she was overwhelmed by how, much, how she was loved and blessed how she felt that from the family and friends that came to her. People wanted to help. They would call or visit. They would drive her to where she needed to go or pick up groceries. They would bring lunch and share a meal with her. You all wanted to return the love that Clara showed to you. And you wanted to be a blessing to her as she was a blessing to you. It reminds me of Jesus' words when I think about how Clara gave of herself. Give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. I have one more word to describe Clara. Christian. Yes, today we remember a, a, a life well lived, but more important than that, we remember a life lived in Christ. It was her faith in Jesus Christ, who Clara knew as her Savior and Lord, that was the source of the joy in them and the love and the peace and the hope in which she lived. I would like to take just a few minutes to, to share some verses from the gospel reading of today that, that Claire herself chose for this event. Jesus said in, in today's text, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Claire knew this. She believed it and she trusted it. The faith that God planted in her heart grew as she was blessed with parents that made sure she was raised with biblical truth and values. It was a faith that matured as she continued to hear God's word and receive the Lord's Supper as she regularly attended worship services. 
by God's grace, Clara believed and trusted that Jesus was her Savior. And by his sacrificial death on the cross, Jesus paid the price for all of her sins. In fact, he died for everybody's sins, for yours and mine and Clara. And Clara knew that it was only by faith that we received this forgiveness. And she knew that the object of the faith was Jesus Christ, Jesus and his gospel message. He truly is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father but through Jesus. And that faith moved her to be involved in people's lives. And she did as a support person in a recovery group that met daily by Zoom meetings. And there she offered prayer and support to people struggling with substance abuse. Her faith moved her to be involved with her church family here at Our Savior as well. She regularly attended worship services and Bible studies. She served on the endowment committee, served on the vacation Bible school committee, and even was active in the week of vacation Bible school. She was a member of Lutheran Women's Missionary League and the Ladies Guild. She worked here with her Our Savior friends at funeral luncheons, quilting, Christmas cookie sale, rubbish sale, and car show. As her health began to fail and she was unable to attend services, she continued to gladly hear God's word and receive Holy Communion during our visits. And at the end of our visits, when I would leave, I would say to her, you know, Clara, I love you. Kate and I both love you. And she would put that grin on her face and say, I love you too, Pastor. But I love Jesus more. <laughs> that, that was Clara. In her heart, without doubt, Clara believed Jesus to be the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus was her way. And Jesus was her life. Jesus died, but he also rose again, defeating death that first Easter morning. Because Jesus lives, Clara lives. Through God's word, Clara knew that God had prepared a place for her and all who believe. And as we look again at the text, Jesus said, In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. Now, I'm not sure how many houses Clara lived in during her many years. I know she grew up in Hillmont. She was in Freeland, here in Midland. So on top of just she moved around a little bit. But if Clara's family and friends were to ask, to think of her current house, what's the first thing that would come to your mind besides Clara? Perhaps her she shed? Her garage that was transformed into a place to entertain and visit. Jesus tells us that his father's house. It's a permanent dwelling, no more moving, and it has many rooms. And Jesus made a promise. He's going to the father's house to prepare a place for Clara. Not only is he preparing a place, but he came to take her there, to be with him in that eternal dwelling. And the door to that dwelling was open when Clara was called to faith in her baptism, when she became a child of God. At her death, at her death she entered that permanent dwelling place with her Savior and with her Father in heaven. To those of us who are left behind, it's bittersweet. It's, the bitter taste comes because we miss Clara. We miss visiting her, playing cards, sharing a meal, sharing a laugh, sitting next to her in the pew. But the sweetness is that we know that she is in a place far greater than our human mind can even imagine. And that we who believe will see her again one day we will see her and all who have died before us in the faith. We'll see Jesus. And there God will wipe away every tear from our eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. And we know that there we will have a body suited for eternity. The imperishable, the imperishable will put on the imperishable, and the world will put on immortality. Clara is now in the place that Jesus prepared for her. In today's text, Jesus also said, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. Jesus spoke these words to his disciples the night before he went to the cross. And that evening he told them a number of things. Some of them were quite troubling. One would betray him, another deny him, and they would all scatter in fear. We're human. Things happen that cause us to worry in our lives, to have fear. 
we have that live in a sinful world that brings with it circumstances that could cause one's heart to be troubled. Facing the death of a loved one, facing your own death is sobering. And it could be troubling apart from Christ. But Paul reminds us that death is swallowed up in victory. He goes on to write, O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us victory to our Lord Jesus Christ. Clara has left this veil of tears. If she were here with us right now, she would say to you, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe in Jesus. Facing death or any of the challenges she faced in this world could not take away the love and the joy, the peace and the hope that was hers in Christ Jesus, even as she took her final breath. Now, we knew that Clara was legally blind, but oh, how clear she could see the spiritual things. She had 20-20 spiritual vision. Today, we remember a life well lived, but more important than that, we remember a life lived in Christ. And to those that she helped with you, you, her family and friends, I can almost hear Clara say to you, I love you all so dear, but I love Jesus more. May those be our words as well. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding, because your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus are crucified and resurrected, Lord. Amen. We will continue with the prayer of the church.
your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will live even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We pray. Lord God, our shepherd, you gather the lambs of your flock into the arms of your mercy and bring them home. Comfort us, comfort us with the certain hope of the resurrection for everlasting life and a joyful reunion with those we love who have died in the faith. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and peace. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. Amen. We will continue with our opening hymn. Let's put it on the back side of your bullet. <laughs> 